Hello, in the last video, I show you how to access the USGS 3 depth LiDAR data uh, using the uh, LiDAR viewer that I created uh, that can stream data directly from Microsoft uh, Planetary computer. And in this video, I'm going to show you a different ways of accessing the data uh, using uh, Entwine uh, point tile format. And so it's the same one here. I have updated the uh, web app. And upper right corner here, now I provide two ways for you to access the data. You can use the Copic, so basically cloud optimized uh, point cloud. It's going to be from plain to computer. So that one only allows you to access a small amount of data, small tile by small tile, because it has been subdivided into uh, smaller pieces for access. But if you want to access data uh, for a large area, then sometimes um, you might find a little bit time consuming to click one by one. So we're going to uh, using the Entwine EPT format that allows you to view the data for the last area all at once. Uh, it's pretty powerful. So for the entire US, all the LiDAR point cloud here, uh, you can either access from the printed computer, the Entwine format is stored under the um, on the AWS Open Data Program. So uh, it's from actually from AWS. And in total, it's about uh, 350 terabyte of data with over 75 uh, trillion points. So it's a huge amount of data. And thanks to uh, Howard Ballard for processing the data uh, to cloud automated um, point cloud and also the Entwine format. And thanks to um, USGS for acquiring the data and also Microsoft and uh, um, AWS for hosting the data for public access. And so I want to show you step by step how to do that. If you are interested in learning more about the Entwine format, um, it actually um, has a website here, allows you to see the data so you can see the footprints, the coverage. So this is kind of depends on the LiDAR campaign. So it's not like rectangular. Uh, footprint so it's all by its campaign and it mosaic all the data together uh, using the entwine so entwine is you can think of it as an index so it's a, a, a efficient way to index the file so so they can stream the data uh, on the fly and it's basically just a json file uh, inside contains information about the bounding boxes and the files under the hood is here if you go to the uh, the link is in the video description below you can click for each campaign, you will show the total number of points here. And at the top here also shows you how many, you can think about how many uh, footprints and the total number of points is over 75 trillion. So it's a huge amount of data. You can click the EPT here. It's going to take you to the, um, the JSON file. And under the hood, it's going to access all the LiDAR point cloud stored on AWS. And you can just see the uh, information here i'm not going to get into the details and i just going to show you using the web uh this uh usgf viewer how to access the data so previously uh we used the uh plain to computer let me quickly show you again right so you can zoom to anywhere you like and so this look at the same area chicago you can either draw a rectangle or you can just use the map extend it should be able to search all the extent you can see from here it's all pretty nice rectangularized but they say i want to look at all the data there's the kind of a, a little bit difficult to click all of them uh, from here uh, one by one so you can zoom in if it's just a small area i can click maybe a couple of lows two to three and then click the low selected it will be able to load the data from printed computer so this is using just a temporary token uh, to access the data if you want a large amount of data to download them then uh, you need to actually use your own plenty to uh, plenty to computer account to access that but look at this it's pretty cool so you can visualize the data um on the fly without having to download the data and the other thing i want to show you here is that i have added new functionality that allows you to change the visualization uh, color map so previously it's just using this uh, same color here but now I've added this one. If you look at the uh, right here, I have different color maps. So you can select them, you can change them uh, interactively. So these are some of the common color map uh, similar to map prop dip. So if you have ever, ever used map prop dip, you might be familiar with this. So you can change each one here. And let me switch to the one, um, the, the, the default color map. Also allows you to 
uh, change the value range, right? So sometimes if you have some outliers, uh, really high extreme high values and also extreme low values, it might skew your data set. So your visualization might not look very good. So if that's the case, you can change the range. So for example here, you can change the slider and look at the color bar here at the top also shows the label. So these are basically being updated dynamically. So if I switch, um, change the slider, you will see it has been changed, right? So if you change the maximum value to a lower range, that means uh, more of the points are going to be rendered as the yellow color. Similarly, uh, you can also switch from the left uh, to the right. All right, so most of the points will be uh, in blue color. So this allows you to easily uh, change the value range for visualization. You can click the reset to go back to the original one. If you know the absolute uh, value, you can also use this absolute. So here you can also drag from the left to the right. So you can see the range from 180 to 255, right? So the minimum value, if you go to the all the way to the end, 160 and all the way to the right. So these are basically the minimum and the maximum value. As you can see right now, it's kind of a all very dark blue because uh, there are a lot of low values and also a lot of high values. So you might want to use this one reset. Uh, then it should give you a much better result um, if you want to. So this gives you a better way to, vote, to control the visualization rather than using the uh, default one. And there's another one here, the elevation filter. This one is um, useful when you want to remove them, some of the points. For the color map here, that one will still show all the points, but just give you a better color contrast. But for the elevation filter, you can filter out some of the, um, for example, here, higher elevation points, you can remove them. So they are not showing here on the map, if this is what you want. So these two serve uh, for different purposes, and it's up to you which one uh, you want to use. Okay, so this is one way to um, visualize the data using the way that I introduced in the last video, but I added this new color map option. So that's why I want to show it in here. Now let's take a look at the second way. So let me clear all the data layer and then zoom out again. So you can go back to the entire US. You can look at any way you like. So this one, we're going to switch to the EPT format. Uh, like I said, is Entwine format. And then the data stored on AWS. So similarly, I can zoom to anywhere that I like and just click this search map as thing. If you look at this one right now, you will see the footprint is different from the previous one that's all rectangular or square. This one right now is based on the data campaign. So it can be pretty big. So look at this one, it's, it's huge. And I want to show you this one in Chicago. So the same area, but instead of like a square, now we're visualizing the old data all together. If you select this one and then click low selected, uh, you should be able to see all the data has been loaded. So for this one, if you look at the uh, the point here, is 93 billion points. Yeah, 93 billion points. So this is a huge data set compared to the one that we used earlier. User is tens of millions of points, but 93 billion is huge. It's not something uh, that you can easily visualize using the traditional uh, traditional way and like I said the total size of all the points for this United States uh, Geological Survey 3 day program is 75 trillion so it's many many times more than that now it's pretty cool right so you can it's basically you can think about it's a virtual mosaic of all the LiDAR point clouds and if you zoom to the area under the hood is going to load the data based on your map view and this might take a couple seconds depending on internet speed but it's what you can see all the data layer is kind of popping up slowly uh, because right now I'm recording and also using a lot of GPU. So it's a little bit slow, but on your computer, you should be able to see all the data will be loaded up slowly and tile by tile. Um, yeah, it's a little bit slow right now, but you should see all the layer loading up and then see all the points. So in that way, you can visualize all the points all together for a large area. Let me maybe refresh, see if it works better. And it's normal, uh, there's just too many points. So uh, it might take a while to load up, but it's useful if you just want to look at a large area without having to click too many times. Okay, now it's better. So look at this, all the point clouds for the Chicago area, for the, for the entire county has been loaded. And so I don't have to click individual one. And similarly, all the 
color map functionality you can still change it so i can go back to here i can change this it will be reflected all at once so this is the power of using cloud native uh, technology that allow us to stream the data and then do the rendering just inside the browser on the fly without having to download the data so this is a very useful if you want to see the data before you download the data and um and there's also the copy the site url and the download selected this one basically just shows you the the json file it doesn't show you the entire one because uh, if you're trying to download this all at once it's going to be a lot if you're trying to download data i would still uh, recommend you go to the uh, plenty of computers so you download smaller pieces um one by one just the, uh, rather than the entire one because this one can be a couple um tens of tens of gigabyte um data so it's pretty big and also you can change for example here in beside the visualization you can also change the intensity so everything works the same way as the copy uh, format and you can change the classification here same thing right again it depends on internet speed sometimes it might take a while to load the data but if you zoom to a uh, another area the data should load up slowly so it's going to be you can think about under the hood is still square by square it's still the light uh, point cloud similar to the printed computer so it's a virtual mosaic and once you load up then you can do the same thing you can zoom in you can take a look at the data pretty nicely if you want to and this one is still have a large z offset so you can maybe remove it so you can so that you can put the thing um the data on the ground by default it's already doing the apply apply the g offset but it might not be big enough if because for large area the variation range is um really is quite a lot and that's why it's you don't want to because you're trying to apply the same color map to the same area but if the elevation range uh, ranges i mean um, uh, a large range then um, the visualization the g offset and also the color color map might not be optimal because it's trying to cover a large area to accommodate too many situations so it might not look super nice but still it's feasible so you can pretty much do it for anywhere that you like so this is just a simple uh data visualization with how many uh 93 billion points and let's try another one let me remove all of them because i know the biggest one here in the us for the 3 day program i think it's 400 something um for over 400 billion points i think it's somewhere here so let me search this one and i believe it's this one so if you click and then look at this uh this one is 343 billion points it's still huge so if i click this load the data set oh no this one interesting this is just the coastal area i believe it's oh it's using the the large one please yeah click this one click again this one should be um yeah so this is the largest one 467 billion points and this is the biggest one in the entire data set and you can load the data then let me switch to the elevation it will look better and change to the uh, default color map and if you zoom in it's going to load the data so this is the biggest one feel free to explore you can do it you can do you can do it for anywhere uh in the us so it's pretty cool so you can zoom in and this one because it has mountains you have other stuff so it's if you do it this one you will see it's kind of a overlay on top of the ground but it's super detailed right so these are all the river the mountains the valleys and you can see uh kind of just like a 3d because it is 3d so the point cloud and this if you don't zoom in it doesn't look like points it's just like the train because just too many points uh, 467 um, billion points okay it looks like my camera is frozen let me see if we can fix it uh let me see okay sorry my camera was frozen uh, in the last couple of minutes i was not able to recover it but uh, uh anyway so that's all for this uh tutorial i hope you find it useful i will see you in the next one take care bye bye